I was 23 years old when this happened. I'm 27 now, and there hasn't been a week that has gone by that I haven't thought about this trip. To celebrate our friend Andrew's 21st birthday, we were taking him on a trip to Vegas. He was always a laid back and kind of shy dude, and we all knew that he hadn't yet done the deed. So we planned on getting him really drunk and to just, to put it bluntly, get him laid. We checked into the Carriage House Hotel, which was one of the more affordable hotels that we could find. We had two separate rooms as there were seven of us in total. There were four of us in the room that I was in. Andrew was in the room with us. The first thing we did was eat, of course, as we were all starving. We then hit the casinos just to say that we did it. Out of the seven of us, only one of us left with more money than entering. We checked out a bunch of different bars and as the night went on, things got more blurry and everything got funnier. We got into a nightclub that was going wild. We caught two of our friends, John and Eddie, walking out with girls. They shot us the about to get lucky look and we understood. The rest of us were trying to pressure Andrew into approaching a girl. But even in his drunk and somewhat loosened up state, he was still too shy to approach anybody or even dance. It got to the point where we were desperate to find somebody for Andrew. We could already foresee that he wouldn't meet any girls at this rate the whole trip. We left the club in search for a working girl. You may think our actions were weird, but as most people were by that time, we were completely hammered. We approached a girl walking alone. Acting like a couple of retards, asked the girl if she would be interested in hanging out with our friend Andrew, who was very noticeably not quite as messed up as us, but still intoxicated nonetheless. The girl wasn't anything special, I could say that even in the state I was in, but we wanted Andrew to have a good time. I don't quite remember what she said in direct response to me, but I remember her voice being slightly deep to the point that I looked at my friend. I also have this slight memory of her analyzing Andrew from head to toe. Again, I don't remember what she said, but it led to her grabbing Andrew's arm and the two of them walking off down the sidewalk. We laughed as we could see how awkward Andrew already felt. None of us thought it was weird what just happened though. But just out of curiosity, to see what was going to go down, we decided to trail behind them. They didn't seem to exchange any words. In fact, it appeared as if the girl was pulling him. We followed for about 15 minutes, I would guess. It could have been much longer, but I wouldn't really know. It was a darker and quieter street. The two of them stepped into what we assumed was an apartment building, and we all laughed. But we were so proud and happy for him too. There was no point in us waiting there, so we went back to the club. At around 2 in the morning, we headed back to the hotel. Andrew wasn't in either of the rooms. I was starting to sober up a little, and a bit of concern began to arise in me. John and Eddie, who weren't with us earlier, were shocked to hear about what happened. We all kind of assumed Andrew was just spending the night with the girl. Still, it was out of character for Andrew doing anything like this, so it was just weird. I texted him and tried calling him. He never answered, but my friends told me to relax. I crashed minutes later. I woke to a ringing sound. At first, with my mind still in sleep mode, I assumed it to be an alarm clock and tried tapping at my phone to turn it off. As my head began to return to reality, I realized the phone was ringing. It was Andrew's number. I literally felt my heart drop for whatever reason. I told my friends who were already awake from the ringing. I answered and was greeted to heavy breathing on the other end. It was Andrew, and he sounded as if he were having some kind of panic attack. I put him on speakerphone so everyone could hear. Andrew began whispering into the phone. Most of it was incomprehensible, but we made out some of what he said. We heard him whisper, It was that woman. Guys, you gotta get over here right now. We tried to engage him, but he wasn't answering anything we were saying. The other end went silent. We were all basically screaming into the phone, asking if he was alright, where he was, what was going on. I was already shaking in my skin at that point, but what happened next only made it ten times worse. Something broke the silence on the other end. 
the sound of a door being opened with force, followed by the shrill and horrific screaming of Andrew, before the sound of the call ending. We were all freaking the fuck out. I called the police and tried to remember the address, or at least the street. We were so messed up last night that I couldn't even remember the route that we took. One of my friends claimed he did though. The police came over to the hotel and they escorted us. My friend seemed to remember exactly where the building was. He guided the police past the club, down the side roads and eventually to the building. Two officers from the front car went inside. We were to wait by the other car. A few minutes felt like hours, waiting in anticipation and in fear of the worst. One of the officers stepped out. She came over to us and asked us to come inside to confirm if the dead body belonged to Andrew. I felt like the entire world just collapsed on my head as John and Jerry both started crying. They didn't want to go in, so I followed the officer into the building, which turned out wasn't an apartment at all, rather some kind of dark abandoned storage building. There was the dead body, leaning out from the open closet. The emotionless face, mouth lifelessly hung open, staring up at the ceiling. It was horrible, but it wasn't Andrew. I knew it right away. The most noticeable feature, this boy had blonde hair while Andrew had black hair. The officers had already scoped the whole place out, so they didn't know what to do. I took a look in the closet that I had a feeling Andrew was hiding in. Nothing. Not even his cell phone. We all did our best to forget about it, but a little more than a month later, I got a phone call during the middle of the night once again. I picked up. There was a bad reception and nobody was saying anything. I was about to hang up when a faint yet familiar voice said, Jesse? Andrew? I yelled. The sound of a door slamming in the background on the other end was the last thing I heard before the call ended. He didn't pick up after the five times I tried ringing him. So what did I do? I called the police and had them trace the call. The call was not coming from Nevada at all. No, it was coming from New Jersey. In fact, our own town, and a house not too far away. They said they were sending somebody to the house, but that wasn't enough for me. I had to go there myself. I GPSed that address, hopped in my car, and floored it the whole five minutes it took to reach the address. It was a vacant house on a corner. I sneaked up to the front door and put my ear against it to listen for anything inside. Nothing. I crawled around back where I found an open window. I listened for a moment. There were the sounds of small snaps and cracks from upstairs. The kinds of sounds you hear from somebody standing or moving on wood. I was sure that he was in there. I hopped inside, but I didn't even get to begin my search before noticing something at the edge of the hallway. Somebody was standing there, facing me, but I couldn't see their face. All I could see were their pale, exposed legs and long black hair down past their shoulders. It was a woman. I was feeling sick to my stomach, anticipating her charging up to me like in some kind of horror movie, but instead, she turned and ran in the opposite direction. I heard the sound of a door slamming shut, followed by footsteps stomping downstairs and then yelling, yelling of a man and woman. There was an even heavier pair of footsteps now stomping up the stairs. That was my cue to run. I left the house and dove into the bush. Not even five seconds later, someone stepped out onto the porch, and for the first time in months, it seemed as if luck was finally on my side as a police car pulled up to the curb, flashing its siren. I heard the guy in the stoop mutter, shit before slamming the door behind himself. The police followed inside. Apparently the idiot didn't even lock the door. I stayed hidden, as I didn't want to startle the cops and end up with a bullet in my skull. I waited by the car out front, and minutes later, one of the officers came outside with the guy in cuffs. I introduced myself and warned that there was also a woman in there, but they never found the woman. In fact, one of the bedroom windows were completely open which implied that she escaped. Andrew was found upstairs, locked in a closet. He was in horrible shape, malnourished, hair long and dirty, 
you could smell him from a mile away. The police ran the records for the man. He was never married, so they really had no way of finding out who the woman was. He even claimed that he had only known her for a day. Nothing made sense, and it still doesn't. Andrew admitted that he was raped, beaten, and hardly fed. I can't even imagine admitting something like that to someone. The girl that originally escorted him to that building was only there to collect payment from what he described as the operators. For some reason, they forced Andrew to give them his hometown and addresses of everyone that was with him that night, which explained why they were in our town, but not actually why they were in our town, like what their intentions were, to kill us? To add us to whatever kind of sex slave operation they were running? I'm the only person he's told out of our group of friends, and whenever somebody asked about it, I just said I don't know what happened. Things were finally starting to look up, when a few days later, I got a text message from a random number one late night, saying, fuck you. Whoever it was blocked me, as I couldn't respond, so I just blocked them back. It happened again the next week, and then the next month. Sure, I had the idea that it had something to do with the incident, but I had no idea it would be taken as far as it was. I woke up one night with a hint of brightness in my room. There was light from outside, in the backyard, shining ever so slightly through the closed blinds. It wasn't sunlight. It was the backyard porch light. I could see a shadow moving in front of the blinds. Somebody was definitely out there. I couldn't really see out of the crack at the bottom of the blind, so I inched it up ever so slightly. There was somebody standing by the window, looking right at me, as if they were waiting for me. But they were gone before I could even think about grabbing my phone to get a picture of them. I strongly believe it was that woman I saw in the house. That was the last time I saw or heard from anyone involved in this shit. Nothing of this whole situation has made a single ounce of sense, even with the best explanation Andrew could give me. I don't see a point in getting into how Andrew and everyone else is doing, as it's nothing interesting. The only thing I can say is I'm waiting for the next time I see any of these animals, and I'll be ready to call the police or take them on myself.